Vicavolt is known for being extremely slow, even as a bug electric type. Which is a shame because this makes its insane base 145 special attack pretty useless. But this thing does actually get access to agility, which can double its speed. After a single agility, Vicavolt is now faster than a max speed flutter main, which is kinda crazy. After speed setup, we can then use Stab Bug Buzz, which activates our Throat Spray item, therefore boosting our already nuts special attack by 50%. Stab Thunderbolts hit extremely hard along with Coverage and Energy Ball, and it turns out that Vicavolt can be more of an offensive threat than the sticky web setter that it's known to be. Alright, look, I always forget that this thing even gets agility, and Vicavolt is way more fun when it's fast. It also feels like not a lot of people expect it either, and if you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And now, let's go ahead and jump into it. So, my opponent's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Glamora, and I'm gonna lead off with the uh, the Big Basti, the Big Don. Call him Donathan out here, I just wanna try to get my Stealth Rock up. Now, I don't necessarily care that much about the potential for Toxic Spikes on my end, I do have the Muck to be able to sponge those up. So as I just decide to set up my Stealth Rock here, they're actually going to end up switching into the Ogre Pond. It is going to be the Wellspring one, and this thing is pretty damn scary. Honestly, to my team in general, Ogre Pond's always, always a threat with potential to set up. And at this point, I'm going to make a little bit of an aggressive play. I imagine if I'm this Ogre Pond, my ass is clicking Swords Dance. It just seems like Bastiodon is always kind of a good setup fodder. And I'm going to go right into the Vicavolt expecting that Swords Dance as I can come in for free. And also, I can know I can live at least one attack. So, I bring in Watson. Listen, it still upsets me that this thing looks fast as hell and it's just very slow. So, they actually end up going for the Focus Energy. That is a tech that I have been seeing with the Wellspring Ogre Ponds, where now he's going to get a guaranteed crit. And that is pretty damn scary. Of course, an Ivy Cudgel it would be able to knock me out with a crit, but I actually do have the Terra Water. In this situation, they surely just go for that Ivy Cudgel, and I'm going to try to go ahead and set up that agility. So, I put the Fountain on my head, bug looking damn ridiculous, and I do go for that Ivy Cudgel. Of course, with that Focus Energy, it is going to crit, but not quite going to be able to do enough with the resisted hit, uh, which is great, because I am agile as hell out here. I go for that agility, and that is going to boost my speed. So, at this point, Vicavolt is actually zooming like you would imagine this thing should be. So, in this spot, I can now just go for the Bug Buzz, and with being able to outspeed, that not only knocks out the Ogre Pond, but also is going to hurt the throat a little bit. So we bust out the Throat Spray, and now not only are we faster than everything on the field, or on either side, I also now have that special attack boost, and this thing is able to hit like a damn truck. So, with that in mind, they decide now to go into the Sneasler. You listen, skinny-ass Sneasler over here, a pretty quick fella. They probably imagine that even with an agility, they're probably faster. But that is where they would be incorrect, because I do in fact outspeed, and a Thunderbolt after a Throat Spray definitely grabs a KO there. The crit actually doesn't even matter, I believe. So that takes care of Sneasler, which is honestly fantastic, because that's kind of the, uh, honestly the biggest threat that I'm worried about. And uh, luckily it wasn't a normal gym fake out set with the Unburden. So with that, the Vicavolt is feeling pretty damn good here. They go into the Serral Edge, who does take that 25% uh, from the Stealth Rock, and a Thunderbolt definitely knocks this thing out. However, this is actually going to kind of put their back against a wall where they're forced to go for a defensive Terra, and it is going to be the Terra Grass. Now, I probably should have imagined that they were going to bust out the Terra and gone for something like the Bug Buzz, but uh, they actually have the priority anyway in the Shadow Sneak, which I'm actually able to live with 6 HP, which is extremely clutch. I can then fire off the Thunderbolts, and thanks to that uh, freaking flower on its head, it does actually live. So... Pissing me off, looking like a damn flower vase over here. And sadly, they do not get fully paired. I did get the lucky uh, para from the Thunderbolt, but a full para there would have pretty much sealed the game to where Vicavolt then just sweeps the entire team. Except they do not, and the Shadow Sneak comes through, and that is going to take care of me. So, I am feeling pretty good that we were able to take care of the Sneasler. Huge threat, and also we did force the Terra out of the Sarah Ledge and get some huge chip on it. So, at this point, we got to see what we can make happen. And the monkey's actually pretty fit for the job, because while this thing cannot shadow sneak me being normal type, I can just get a free fake out now that it's grass type, and have a good time. But instead, they actually end up saving the Serra Ledge, kind of imagine they would probably you know, just save that for, or leave it for death fodder, but they actually end up switching into the Glamora here, and we gotta smack him around a little bit with our weird monkey utter looking hand. So it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, it does also lay down some toxic spikes, which is honestly just more annoying than anything. Because, uh, I, of course, I do have the Muck to soak him up, and I also have the Rapid Spin on the Blastoise. So, the problem with Muck is I can't really hard switch into it on a potential Earth Power, so I decide 
I want to save the Ambipom for later. That thing is looking pretty nice. It's always just honestly super useful in terms of just having really hard hitting priority and just being a fast boy. So I decided to go into the Blastoise here. Uh, the regular poison isn't that big of a deal. If it's two layers of toxic spikes is when it starts to stack and it kind of sucks. So they actually end up going for the Meteor Beam here, which is honestly kind of surprising. Meteor Beam comes through and that is not going to feel great because they do get the special attack boost that comes with it. And as it looks insane, honestly, the Blastoise takes it nicely. I, I've been really liking using this uh, Assault Vest Blastoise just because looking at my team comp, you just imagine this would be a Shell Smash set, and it's not. He's just here to be bulky as hell and be just like a, a good defensive switch in and then pivot with things like the flip turn. So unfortunately, however, they are able to finish me off with the Venoshock as uh, Blastoise probably would have been good to kind of keep around, looking at some of the threats they have left, specifically things like that Gliscor. I'm like, well, that is going to be a problem for later. So <laughs> I decide now just to go right back into the Bastiodon. Uh, the good thing is that my Sturdy is still intact. So if they want to just go for an Earth Power, going to knock me down to one, and I will not only be able to get off my Heavy Slam, but then I'm actually in Custap Berry range. But they actually end up going for the Power Gem, and they get to crit, which is kind of like, well, shit, that's actually... Wildly unfortunate, as I do knock this thing out with a Heavy Slam, which is nice. I am out of range of Custap Berry. Keeping Sturdy intact would have been nice, and uh, Bastiodon's just kind of a... Kind of just a sit and wall over here. You gotta, you gotta admire his willingness to chill, though. I do respect it. So, now they get a, a Revenge Switch, and they decide to go right back into the Serilege, who I figured was going to be fodder. But uh, at this point, it can hit me for some solid damage with a Bitter Blade. It is actually still faster even being paralyzed, and it does not quite <laughs> take me out. Because Bastiodon, if it does anything well, it's stay alive as long as you're not against like a close combat or something. So this does now allow me to go for the Heavy Slam. Unfortunately, after the heal from the Bitter Blade, it actually friggin' lives it, which is annoying. And while I do want to see if there's an option for me to have a better time to use my Custat Berry, I'm like, you know what, fuck it, we eat now here. I'm just gonna go ahead and activate that. I am in range. Allows me to then go first and heavy slam away the Serilege, who did ruin our plans for our damn Vikavolt earlier. So all my homies hate this thing, except for the fact that it's probably the coolest looking designed Pokemon they made this generation, except for the fact that the shiny is ass. Please, Game Freak, hire me to make cooler shinies. Anyway, now in the Revenge Switch, they decide to go into the Alolan Ninetales. I kind of figured that was a weird call because I, if they don't just knock me out here, you're four times weak to a Heavy Slam. And they actually don't even go for the Aurora Veil, they're actually going to Calm Mind, which is kind of sweet. Because I'm like, hey, this is uh, Bastiodon's out here actually doing better than this thing usually does. <laughs> I go for that Heavy Slam, and the Calm Mind is going to backfire. They probably expected something like a switch into, like, Muck. But I'm like, you see, you've seen the Heavy Slams out here. I'm just going to be I'm slamming. Call me... Fucking slammy Sosa out here. So that is able to take that thing out, which is nice. And their final Pokemon, unfortunately, and I cannot emphasize that enough, is this freaking Gliscor. So generally, these are just going to be, you know, a Toxic Orb set that uh, potentially Swords Dances, goes for things like Toxic, Earthquake. As they come in, they actually Acrobatics. And it kind of makes me think maybe it's going to be like a Fling set, which would be lit. But as I Heavy Slam, it does activate that, uh, that Toxic Orb. And with Poison Heal, this thing is just... Isn't big meaty claws over here is an absolute annoyance to deal with. It also shows me they have the protect, which is super fun. It, <laughs> they're literally the worst Pokemon to play against. Might just be Poison Heal Gliscor, especially if you have no trace of an Ice Beam left on the squad. So at this point, I, I do have a plan. Now they go for a Swords Dance, which is kind of scary because now this thing is going to be hitting pretty hard. However, my Heavy Slams are bringing this thing down below half. The freaking Toxic Heal just heals way bigger of a chunk than you would want. And they even are also going to just bust out more Protects on every other turn, just get the health back. And I can't really afford to make a switch here. The thing is, my only Mon that I have left is able to do good damage is going to be the Bruxish with a Liquidation. And that's going to do, I think, like 70, 65, 70%, not even enough. So I really just need some chip on this thing. And ideally, I just stay in here. I can go for Heavy Slams until it's like around half. They are going to obviously have to kill me eventually if they want this game won. And as I'm looking at this, they can literally just Sword Stance again. They're at plus six attack. They can now just protect. I have one Heavy Slam left. Moral of the story, I'm having a bad time. I really consider, I'm like, should I just run from this? I... I really just do not want to deal with this. And that's how Gliscor mainly just makes me feel. Like, I just, it, it, I, I'm going to be sitting here all damn night, and this thing's just going to win, and I'm going to be pissed. But I can't let him have it. I, I, can't, I cannot bring myself 
to let this Gliscor have that. I'm gonna do everything in my power to see if we can pull this pull this back. So I am out of Heavy Slam, so I have to start clicking Reversal, which is fun. And they Swords Dance again, now they're at plus six, which is cool. So here's the thing, on this turn, they're definitely gonna protect. Every other turn, they're going for protects just to keep it healthy. So I decide to make a switch into the Ambipom. And the main goal with Ambipom is to basically just go ahead and pressure with a fake out, but also, more importantly, be able to get a double hit off. I am faster, and as I come in, I get extra purple because we do get poison, which doesn't really matter. Ambipom's gonna die to uh, any attack this thing throws at me. It's also It also has acrobatics, which is weird because it has its items still. And I'm just over here confused and mad at this at this Gliscor at this point. So after the poison heal, it is in fact at freaking nearly full HP. And as I go for the fake out, guess what? They just protect it, which is super extremely fun playstyle. This is the, the, a goaded mod. So obviously fake out's not gonna work, but the only thing I need Ambipom to do is literally just get off that double hit. As long as I can get some chip with a double hit, it's honestly gonna do a decent bit. And then I can go Bruxish, and Bruxish should be able to finish it off with a liquidation. The bad news is, this thing's at full HP, and I've played against this thing horribly. So I go for the double hit, and guess what? The 10% chance to miss comes through and just absolutely bones me. Just like this X Scissor. His other attacking move, other than acrobatics, is X Scissor, which is just even more confusing. So, <laughs> at this point, I have no other option. I just have to go into Bruxish, and I'm like, please. Lord, if you love me, you will get me a critical hit at this point, and I will be extremely in your in your debt. So, I come in. Liquidation is going to be super effective. It's sad that I don't have a Terra Water at this point, but I can go for it, and it's going to do a nice chunk. It does more than I expect. Kind of reveals this thing is not max HP or max defense. And I also do get a defense drop. And while Bruxis does go down to this X Scissor, ordinarily, me being sitting here with freaking Muck and Bastiodon, I'm kind of screwed against this Gliscor. However, there is a way. Because what I can do is we know they don't have the coverage with Earthquake. And Muck can come in, even though this thing's plus six attack, I feel like they probably protect this turn and I can predict that and go for a curse. The only way to beat these things is literally just to use their own protects against them. So they do protect there, I can then go for a curse. And now I am at plus one attack and this thing is at minus one defense. So I'm sitting here thinking, hold on a second. I do also have priority with Shadow Sneak, and even though they do get a whole chunk of health back after that Poison Heal, there's a chance that this is maybe able to kill. I don't know the calcs in this situation. It, in fact, does not kill, which is sad, but with my defense boost from that curse, I'm actually able to take an Acrobatics. Buddy should definitely not have Acrobatics in this situation, but I'm here for it. So, now we have one turn that's gonna basically solidify the match. A Shadow Sneak kills, but I know they're gonna protect. Surely they're gonna try to get some more health back, and I make the prediction correct, I'm able to curse on the protect turn once again. And now being at plus two attack, we've seen the damage from the last time. And definitely even after this next poison heal, we should be able to get a kill with this shadow sneak. And I would be so extremely satisfied if I can just finish off this Gliscor. Because this is personal at this point. I was like, I'm going to sit here and see what I can do against this damn thing. And I'm going to make it happen. So I'm able to go for this shadow sneak. It all comes down to this. They try for the second protect. It does in fact fail, and guess what? Shadow sneak your ass right back to the Shadow Realm, and please never use a Toxic Heal Gliscor against me ever again. That's gonna, do, that's gonna do it, and that was a very interesting battle. That could have been a whole lot easier if the circumstances were just a little bit different, but it is what it is, and uh, that was kind of fun. So, with that, I have battle number two. So, first let me start off by saying this is one of the funniest battles I've had in a long time. It's also because I'm going up against my good buddy Hunter, Cypher BLK on YouTube. He makes great Wi-Fi battle videos as well. You should definitely check out his channel in the description. But this is an ext extremely good match against a, a fun player, so let's jump into it. Alright, so my guy's gonna end up leading off with Bubble 07, the Araquanid nickname game goes crazy. And I, of course, have the, uh, the token lead, Bastiodon, who... Doesn't really do great against Araquanid, mostly just because I cannot touch this thing, but also it, uh, it this thing hurts with Liquidation. Because of that water, water Bubble ability, it gets a nice boost to it. It's able to do a whole bunch of damage, and it also doesn't really even put me into Custap Berry range, which doesn't really matter because I can't touch it, but also I'm just here to lay my Stealth Rock down so I don't get fined. So, I get that Stealth Rock up, which is nice, as uh, at this point, I kind of just want him to kill the Bastiodon. I see... The turn one liquidation, I'm thinking maybe this thing's choice ban. It didn't really look like choice ban damage. 
Um, but they do actually just go for <laughs> uh, the sticky web there, which is unfortunate. Now, this team, again, doesn't really care about hazards because of the uh, rapid spin Blastoise. And I figure, you know what, I'm just going to switch right into Blastoise at this point. It's more than likely they just go for another liquidation, and I can potentially try to save the Bastiodon. So... As I go into Blastoise here, I do of course get caught in the sticky web, but more importantly, there's a lot of kind of interactions that can happen here. As they go for the liquidation, it's not going to do a whole bunch of damage, and I figure they also probably imagined that uh, I go for a rapid spin here. I, I bring this thing in right after the sticky web, so I'm thinking I can lure in their ghost type in the Bramblegast, and then go for a, a flip turn instead and try to get a little bit of a switch momentum, but instead they actually stay in, and I'm like, well, that is not ideal. I, Honestly, <laughs> now just stuck against this damn spider, and I hate this thing. So I decided to go right back into Bastiodon, basically as just a sack. I, this thing's not going to really, it doesn't look that great in this matchup for me. And as they go for the leech life, it's not going to really touch me at all. And I'm like, please, this this bubble is worse than the Gliscor before. The Blastoise switch in was supposed to scare him on potentially being a shell smash set, but also pressuring with the r rapid spin, and then trying to get a whole bunch of momentum if they did switch with that flip turn. But instead, now I'm stuck staying in here. I go for the Custap Berry <laughs> body press uh, to do zero damage to the guy, and he finishes me off with the liquidation, which is honestly what I've been looking for this entire time. Bastion going down now allows me a free switch, because there's not much as switches in, switching into a water bubble boosted liquidation from a, a freaking Arachnid who probably has max attack. So, at this point, I do have a couple different options, and I really feel like Mandibuzz can kind of take advantage of this the best. So, I go into this thing, this Mandibuzz is a special attacking weak armor set, and while I need to get hit by a physical attack to do stuff, I'm feeling like I can probably make that happen on whatever they want to bring in here. So, they're actually going to end up going into the Rhyperior. So, Dwayne the big ol' Rock Johnson comes in, and I actually go for the Nasty Plot, which is great because... He probably expected this to be something like a defog set, or, but definitely not going to be a special attacking set. So as I get that nasty plot up, at this point I figure, you know what, I actually live a stone edge from this thing. So I can go for a dark pulse even knowing it's not actually going to kill. He ends up actually going for the rock blast, and actually rock blast his ass right into the mist. And that is extremely like, kind of funny because that literally was like the worst case scenario on his end. Because now a dark pulse is able to just finish off the Rhyperior. And uh, Rock Blast coming through with the miss for us is clutch. Because that actually would have killed. I did not know it was going to be a Loaded Dice Rock Blast set. So I still, at this point, I'm trying to get that weak armor to activate. Because if I can get Mandibuzz faster than stuff, he's going to have a good time. So now on the free switch, they actually decide to go into uh, the Grand Bull. And I'm thinking, what the hell is this Grand Bull going to do to me? I'm definitely not afraid. I go for an Air Slash just to try to roll a flinch. Um, and I also know that I can live a play rough, as they do go for that Mandibuzz is quite defensive, and uh, that is going to allow me to get a nice little weak armor boost. Not only that, but also a weakness policy. We are out here boosted as hell. I now have plus, what, what is it, four to special attack, and my speed is now doubled. So I'm literally faster than everything, and I am able to hit extremely hard. So I go for the Dark Pulse to finish this thing off. He actually told me after the match that that was a Assault Vested Grand Bull, so uh, luckily that Dark Pulse is able to finish it off. And now he has to figure out what to do against this very fast, <laughs> special attacking Mandibuzz. And they decide to go into the Empoleon. So, there's a few scenarios where Empoleon is a threat here. But I'm like, you know what? I'm this far on this Mandibuzz. I'm going to see if I can't get this thing to just go all the way. I'm actually going to bust out the Terra Dark just to boost that Dark Pulse even further. I know that a lot of the time Empoleons are built specially defensive. And at this point, I'm just really hoping it's more of an offensive guy. So, I go for that Terra Dark. And I'm like, if it doesn't kill, maybe I get a flinch. I bust out the Dark Pulse. Honestly, I'm expecting this to kill. And it turns out, this thing absolutely eats that shit for breakfast. He literally lives it extremely easily. Now allows it to fire off a Surf at me. And it turns out that that thing was, I think it was max HP, max special defense, like a calm set. And that is unfortunate. So the Empoleon kind of rains on our parade there with the Mandibuzz. But we've still got some threats in the back. And this game is just going to get even crazier. So... I decide on what to bring in here. I can actually bring in Vikavolt pretty freely. I, I know that uh, I can take at least one attack, and he probably expects this to be a sticky web set and not an agility. So I can actually just go ahead and bust out the supersonic speed Vikavolt at this point. So I am actually faster than this thing because I do have timid max speed. So it's actually kind of funny to see this thing faster than something even before I get the agility off. So as they fire off the surf, I am now plus two speed. And I should be faster than literally everything they have left. And Vikavolt is quite the threat in this situation because 
Looking at it, I really want to go for the bug buzz to try to get my throat spray, but seeing as how easily it lived that dark pulse, I'm like, I'm afraid. I can't, I can't do it. I just go for the thunderbolt, and that is going to take care of the Empoleon. So, Vikavolt is in a pretty solid position right now. I do not have the throat spray boost, however, and as they're able to go into the Bramble Gas, they also have not used their Terra yet. Now, Bug Buzz is my only neutral move, so I'm thinking I'm just going to go for that, see how much damage I can get, and there's a chance that I'm actually able to live an attack. I don't know what this thing really wants to throw at me. Uh, its best damage would be something like Poltergeist, but they're actually they're going to bust out the Terra. It is going to be Terra Fire. It lights the damn Tumbleweed on fire, which seems like some type of health code violation, but uh, they do end up now being able to take the Bug Buzz, but here's the situation, right? I go for the Bug Buzz, which then activates my throat spray gives me that plus one to special attack i'm thinking hey this is pretty sweet please do what i think he's gonna do he goes for the poltergeist which relies on me having an item and since i just used it it actually does not affect me at all and now that this thing is fire type i actually also still have that plus one special attack and a neutral thunderbolt is able to kill it <laughs> is the most satisfying thing ever the poltergeist was kind of his best damage in that situation and getting rid of my item was the only way I get out of that, which is literally hilarious. So, he does still have like the scariest damn thing ever, which is going to be the coma o His team is all a bunch of nonsense, and then there's just a crazy ass coma o out here. And I do not even have a neutral hit on this thing, and plus, if it's able to start setting up with a clangorous soul and a throat spray, I'm gonna be in danger. So, I go for the thunderbolt just to try to get a para here. It does not in fact get the para, and it also now allows it to go for that Clangorous Soul, which is going to in fact give it a plus one boost to literally everything. And if that sounds crazy, that's because it is. But it's also even crazier that that actually activates a Throat Spray. So not only is it plus one in everything, it's actually plus two in Special Attack. And the only silver lining at this point is that I did do some good chip with that Thunderbolt, uh, to the point where I should be okay with priority and the ammo palm in the back. So, unfortunately, I'm sitting at plus two speed, they're at plus one, it is a way faster fella, and a flamethrower is gonna be able to take care of me. So, uh, the Koma has now become the biggest threat on either side, but luckily, I do in fact have a monkey that uh, has some hands that are rated E for everyone. So, as I go into ammo palm here, I can obviously threaten with the fake out. The sticky web, of course, is gonna make everything slower. I really wasn't worried about sticky web this entire game just because of Blastoise, but I have not found myself a position to do it. And as the fake out comes through, he actually lives on one HP. He literally told me that was one HP live, and that is wildly unfortunate for me because while Ambipom gets outsped, I can't afford to leave it in, and that means now I actually have to sack the Blastoise. I come in. And basically as death fodder because as long as the Palm is alive I can come back in and go for a second fake out it just sucks that I have to now you know, waste the blastoise but uh, I do actually live in attack because I'm freaking assault vested I don't know what size vest buddy's wearing but blastoise gotta be in like a triple XL uh, but I am gonna in, in fact go down finally and that is gonna open the door back up for Ambipom to come back in and this game is getting extremely close for a little bit of an overview here in this situation I have the Ambipom and the Bruxish where he has the Koma O along with the Araquanid, who hasn't taken any damage since that little bit of chip that we had earlier. So I can at least go for the fake out, finish off the Koma O, and you will not be hurting anybody else today. He couldn't really switch in that situation because it comes back in on Stealth Rock and dies. And now the final Pokemon is going to be the Araquanid. So the good thing is, Buddy's got six legs, but he's actually still slow as hell. And Ambipom, definitely even being under Sticky Web, should be able to outspeed. All I need is chip on the double hit, and I miss. I swear to God I'm missing double hits way more often than you would expect <laughs> from a 90% accurate move. And now I am forced to take that liquidation, which I can actually live, which is clutch, um, and then does allow me to at least connect on the second double hit. But the first one would have solidified the game easily, and now at this point, uh, as they finish me with a leech life just to get a little tiny bit of health left, I am now down to my final Pokemon, which is going to be... The ugly ass fish. Now, luckily though, I am actually Choice Scarf, and even with the Sticky Web, again, Araquanid, very slow, and Nigel, he is a pretty quick fellow with that nice little scarf. So I come in, I do get caught up in the Sticky Web, and now I'm just kind of hoping that uh, the physical defense is not, uh, this thing shouldn't be invested in that, so I'm like, okay, Psychic Fangs at this range, definitely should be able to kill. I'm able to go first, take a nice little bite out of him, and that does end up finishing off the Araquanid. So that was honestly extremely close and hilarious and over overall just a really fun match. And uh, it always seems to be against my boy Cypher 
And uh, that's gonna do it for that one. So since you guys have been commenting a lot that you do enjoy the longer videos, I have a nice little bonus battle here for you. And this again is a super fun match against a super interesting team. So let's jump into it. So in this one, my dude's actually gonna end up leading off with the Terrakion. It's been so long since I've seen a regular Terrakion that I forgot that this thing even existed. He looks weird over there to me for some reason. <laughs> but I have the Bastiodon, and honestly, I'm pretty fit to handle this matchup. While, of course, the close combat is going to absolutely destroy my ass into smithereens, I do hang on with one little little thread of the sturdy. So that is going to drop this thing's defenses, which is great. I kind of expected a stealth rock lead. I'm like, damn, bro, I thought we were comparing sizes out here, man. You just go and pull out the wild card and punch me. Fine. I see how it is. So I get my stealth rock up, and then I'm like... This is actually perfect. I, no one's going to expect the cussed out berry. I can then bust out the berry, which allows me to move faster. And uh, with that defense drop, a reversal at 1 HP actually ends up killing the Terrakion. And that is why this thing has been in hibernation. Buddy sucks. And <laughs> down goes the Terrak. And Bastiodon actually coming in pretty damn clutch with that reversal. I'm not even going to lie. So, uh, now they do get the switch into whatever, and they decide to go into the fortress so listen i know what this guy i know what he's gonna do i see him in his little glasses over there surely they're just gonna go for the rapid spin at one hp a rapid spin's a good play because not only does it kill the basti but it also is gonna get rid of that stealth rock so i am not gonna let that happen that easily and i'm gonna try to take advantage of this rapid spin by switching into uh, the mandibuzz here so what happens here is, of course, they do get the stealth rock away, which does suck, but being hit by a physical attack, I now get that weak armor, and we are now chilling with doubled speed. The drop in defense is unfortunate, but eh, while it even looks like this Mandibuzz probably can't really sweep in this game, I'm going to try to see how far we can take it and just try to punch some holes in the team. So I now can just go for a nasty plot, knowing that uh, this thing probably doesn't have anything to knock me out here, and even better, they actually just go for the stealth rock of their own. So we are now flapping at uh, plus two special attack, plus two speed, and also I have the coverage on the steel types. With that heat wave, heat wave is able to take care of it. Literally nobody sees the heat wave coming. A lot of checks to the mandibuzz are going to be steel type, and then you just bop them with a nice little wave of heat, like it's the damn summer in Arizona, and that is going to be enough to shrivel up the walnut and kill it. So now they get a switch into Sylveon, and now I realize, yep, this Sylveon is a damn problem because <laughs> that air slash does literally nothing and while i am actually able to live a hyper voice it uh is going to be super effective and give me my weakness policy except i'm going to need all sorts of damn boosts to be able to do enough with an air slash against this thing and it turns out this is quite the specially defensive crazy ass skin ribbons freaking eevee over here and that is kind of annoying so i do want to try to roll for some freaking flinches it, it kind of that's the one good thing about Air Slash, while well, it is a shit move in terms of accuracy and damage, you can sometimes get a flinch, which does that outweigh the... Con no, it does not, but it's fine. Sometimes it does happen, and we might get a little bit of luck on our side. It also turns out that freaking Sylveon has Protect, and I'm like, who the hell has Protect on Sylveon? It probably just means it's going to be like a Wish Protect set, but uh, it, it is what it is. So another Air Slash does connect, and hey, we actually get the flinch, which is great, but it also just didn't really do enough damage. That's the it's the cons of having literally the lowest damn special attack possible and trying to make stuff a special sweeper. So I'm just going to continue rolling for air slashes, see if I can't grab some more flinches, uh, just because literally why not? This uh, Mandibuzz is kind of used up at this point. I in fact do not get the flinch and that allows this thing to go for the wish. So the suspicion was correct. We saw the protect, it means it is a wish protect set and surely they're going to go for a, a protect here. So with that knowledge, I can actually go for another nasty plot, and we are out here thinking the nastiest shit you can possibly imagine. Mandibuzz is, uh, you, you don't even want, you don't even want to know. I also was sitting at plus six special attack, and I have the weakness policy boost, and I had the weak armor, and truly could not be in a better spot for what this Mandibuzz is supposed to do, but it turns out when Sylveon's over here getting all of its health back, it, it does kind of suck. I'm gonna need some flinches here to do what I need to do. Hey, but sometimes the luck is on your side. Is it going to be today for the air slashes? No, it is not, because the Sylveon does in fact not flinch, but at least I'm able to chip it down to a pretty easily killable range after that. So, as it does finish me off, that is fine. Mandibuzz, it's not his day. And uh, after some leftover recovery, this thing's still feeling pretty damn way more healthy than you would imagine looking at a, a, guy, a guy that was as set up as me. But I can at least now take this opportunity to grab a nice little revenge switch into the Bruxish. Honestly, I've been having fun with Bruxish lately. This thing's ugly as hell, and I feel like nobody likes this mon, but it's honestly, it's really fun, because 
Psychic Fangs, not only is it able to be boosted by the Strong Jaw, it breaks through screens. A lot of the time, you run against so many Alolan Ninetales, and being able to get rid of Aurora Veils in one bite is pretty nice. So, they actually now go back, they're going to go into the, uh, the Noivern. And this thing is fast, but it's not faster than me with a Choice Scarf. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, hold on a second. Actually, I, actually I can bust out the Terra Psychic which is going to boost my already boosted Psychic Fangs even further, and I think this has a pretty good chance uh, to roll for a kill here. So I put the uh, I put the old eyeball on my head, and I'm going to take a bite at him. I do outspeed the Noivern here, which is always fun, and it lives on 1 HP. I swear to God my luck is horrendous, but then I'm like, oh wait, it's not actually 1 HP. It's not even a freaking Noivern. The Focus Ash is revealed, and it isn't going to be the freak the damn Hisuian Zorark. So... That, I've been bamboozled in that spot. I didn't have Stealth Rock up, which didn't show me what it was going to be. And so, it is what it is. Bruxish does go down now to a Shadow Ball. And uh, you can show him to Teef one last time. So, at this point, now I know that since this thing doesn't have like a Nasty Plot or anything, Vikavolt is actually in a position where I can set up an Agility. And everything else they have left does not enjoy anything this Vikavolt can do. So... As I bring in Watson, obviously the Stealth Rock hurts, and the best it can do in terms of damage is going to be something like a Shadow Ball. So, as they go for this Shadow Ball here, Vikavolt do be pretty thick. I live it with 30, which is insane. And now, it's time to bust out the Agility, which is going to allow me to outspeed not only this Hisuian Zorark, but the actual Noivern in the back, along with the Gyarados. So, now I can actually bust out the Bug Buzz. It is on 1 HP, of course, that is going to take care of it, and also now get me to plus 1 Special Attack, which... It's kind of unnecessary, considering there's just a, a Gyarados over there, along with the Noivern. Neither of them like a Thunderbolt. But the bad news is, they have not used their Terra yet. And these are two very scary Pokemon to be going up against when they still have their Terra. They, this thing can set up in my face. As Gyarados comes in, I'm thinking, surely they're going to use a Terra Ground here. This is a situation where I do not click Thunderbolt because a Terra has never been more obvious. And I'm like, if this doesn't Terra and I just Bug Buzz... A straight up Gyarados, I'm going to look like an idiot on the YouTube, but it's fine. I'm going for it, and they do actually bust out the Terra, which, thank God. They are going to change the type, but now it just comes down to, what are they going to change it to? It's actually going to be Terra Dragon, and I'm like, well, shit, that means maybe actually a plus one Bug Buzz does kill its stab. I have the Throat Spray, I'm thinking, hold on a second. The Bug Buzz comes through, but the Gyarados is way too damn thick. It's able to barely hang on, except as they go for this scale shot, it actually misses, which is amazing because finally the 10% miss comes in clutch. I am freaking not on my end, and now I can finish it off with that Bug Buzz. Down goes the Gyarados, and that was uh, probably a very infuriating miss on there, but hey, we are going to take it. Vikavolt is now going to be able to clutch it out because... The final Pokemon being this Noivern, while you generally look at this matchup thinking this thing is, has like 500 more speed than I do, but I will say not with an agility, because I'm actually able to outspeed, and a Thunderbolt is going to be able to finish off the Noivern, and that is going to be the end of the game. So, this is a way more fun Vikavolt to work with than just the standard ones that I usually mess with, mess with even with just like choice specs and stuff, but... Uh, Thank you guys very much if you did stick around. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll catch you with some more shenanigans next time. Peace out.